there's these young uh, white cats in Connecticut somebody wanted to make a movie shit they just did it they didn't wait around three brothers from Shelton teamed up to make a film as a family <laughs> Do people get tired of all this like bullshit fake talk like of just yeah. all like if there's an opinion on this there's an opinion on that it's either go out and get what the fuck you want or don't and fucking sit on your ass and do nothing and say it's because of this because of that if you keep moving and you don't get caught up in what people say you get somewhere it's only when you stop that everything stops the goal was to say look look what a couple of kids can do with no money Ray, he's you're not the reason people are coming to the venue. You're not the reason people are, are coming out to the show. So what do you have to offer? What being a real man is all about is the ability to handle an immense amount of pressure. So everything I do is pressuring. Just like such as life, once you hit a certain age, the pressure comes on and it doesn't come off unless you find a way out of the rat race. You know, life till your death is going to be a pressuring, pressuring situation. So I take on the pressure and I try to embrace it. It has me real exhausted at times to juggle so much at once. Coach Coaches will advise that you only really try to take on two meaningful tasks at once. I take on about five, six at once because I'm here, I'm alive, and, and it's happening now. My purpose, which is entertainment, it's filmmaking, it's writing, it's doing everything I do, has always, and I think based on my life experience so far, forever and always will bring me more like just good well-being feeling in life yeah. than a girl ever can it's just the way i'm wired something about the it's way not i'm that wired. satisfaction something it's about the way i'm wired cutting a movie beginning to end will never ever come in second to like the love of the most perfect woman in the world i'm just sick of talking to fucking losers fucking losers that all they've done their entire fucking life is just follow what their parents or what their elders said or what society thinks they should be doing to the point where literally they will judge anything you do whether there's income rolling in or not from it because this is not what i've been trained to be socially normal and to be socially acceptable you have to be kind of crazy to do the shit we do and like do podcasts or make music or make a movie you got to be kind of crazy to chase it but at the same time people do not realize how fucking legitimately crazy they are to follow something and go to fucking college and spend sixty thousand dollars a year just to be accepted in your household in society whatever the fucking case and not even get a job and not even get a job be a hundred thousand dollars in debt when you get out of it and you don't love it you have one life to live if you're not chasing what you love you're literally wasting your life because of someone else's opinion someone else's fucking perspective shout out to my sister a waste a, a fucking time and you're wasting your life and you're wasting spending time with people that you love and all this other shit. If you're not doing what you love. You are wasting your fucking life. And if you let people influence what you do, regardless of what you love or not, you are a fucking loser. And if you could go through life just compensating with yourself being a fucking straight up loser and not chasing your dreams, then that's what you deserve. Good daily habits. I don't think a lot of people realize what that does for the psyche. What it does for the psyche is it demonstrates for the psyche that you're even capable of doing the things you're telling yourself you can do. And if you don't demonstrate to your own psyche that you're capable of getting up, working on your purpose on a daily basis, your psyche literally has no reason to believe you're even capable of these things. So at my speech, I called this establishing credit with yourself. Because if you don't do that, the reason why, when you tell yourself, I'm gonna get up at 6 a.m., I'm gonna go to the gym, then I'm gonna work on my purpose before I even get to my day job, yeah. there's a part of yourself that says, yeah, but I know I'm really not gonna do that because your psyche literally has no reference for the idea that it's even possible. Demonstrate for yourself that you can do it. There's a call for the world not to be judgmental instead of there being a call to just not give a fuck when they judge you. The people that are afraid of everything and they're fucking upset by everybody's words and their feelings are hurt, they want to create a world where there is no judgment instead of taking on an attitude where I'm not gonna give a fuck what anybody says and I'm just gonna be me. Cause you'll never change the, the world of judgment. Life is generally bad with good moments in between. I don't really care what anybody has to say. It's a horrific ordeal. You come here, you watch people suffer, you lose people, and then you lose yourself in the process unless you commit to a good daily practice that keeps your head on straight. You need motherfucking something to keep yourself sane. I don't care what you believe in, but you must believe in something. Well, we're struggling with serious mental health issues and we believe in nothing on top of it. And that's served people greatly to know that in our darkest of times, we can all be assured that there's no rhyme or reason for motherfucking anything. Now I understand not persuading people to become Christians, but just talking about the value of belief, even as a placebo effect, which goes like this. You believe in God, 
and you believe that if you work hard and do the right thing, God will bless you. Then you work hard and do the right thing, hoping God will bless you. And when blessings come, you blame it on a blessing from God when maybe you blessed yourself just by working hard and doing the right thing. But what was the motivation? God. And even if there's no God, look at the good the belief in God did because you used God as a reason or as an excuse to do the right thing. You know what it is, Kevin? As much as like you can be as passionate about Adobe Premiere or what you do or like me with hockey is that you're not falling in love with your computer. I'm not falling in love with hockey. You fall in love with being happy. That's literally just what it is. And when certain things take, a, take away point. from what I makes you happy, happy, you choose happy. Choose it's a difference. So like, as stupid as it sounds, if a bitch was like, it's either me or hockey, that's, that's the difference between like, it's not like me or a sport. It's like, choosing you or my own literal happiness is what makes me happy and i love it it's my life it has to do with your circle and the people you have around you you figure out your bad vices and your good vices and you figure out which ones to keep and you figure out which ones to not keep get out from where you're at me and richie go and do the street interviews and we go to these hot spots like, new york city central park now people go out there like business people celebrities they go to central park they get some coffee and they have a meeting in central park out there find the hubs of places where you know that like you can run into some people of status if you let stupid shit bother you you don't even fucking realize you're forgetting your mortality in that moment you could get cancer tomorrow but let's let this stupid shit bother us right the fuck now yeah it exactly. goes to show that part of being alive is actually fooling yourself into thinking that you're gonna live the only forever. thing promised in life is death my sister died when she was seven so i seen that already so I, I already realized that life was short i already lived my life thinking you know life is short so i already had that mindset everybody up here they really don't they really don't understand the value of life because they don't understand the shortency of it like life is a very short thing my teachers my parents the authority figures who wanted to set me up for a nine to five life would try to motivate me with quotes by entrepreneurs kind of proving that they don't fully understand entrepreneurship and then even our family when we take great risk to get great reward they're just fucking nervous and they think we're reckless as all fuck but oftentimes they're the same people that quoted the people that took risk to achieve great success in the first and place understand financial it's freedom all backwards it's yeah. as backwards as the red pill in relation to relationships i've learned that people need their bullshit validated in order to feel loved but sometimes you're loved by somebody who has no interest in your bullshit just by making sure you're straight the people that endlessly give you an ear and listen to your bullshit it may make you feel good but those are often the people who can't do shit for you, you. Like, losers always got an ear for you because they want the same validation like yeah, i had right? it rough you had it rough who's the only motherfucker that took care of everything Dad, who's the only asshole in the scenario? Dad, you don't understand our shit. <laughs> My sometimes ridiculous desire for things that keep life creative and interesting always made me feel like a madman. Like, why can't I be content with the simple things in life like everyone else? Why can't I have a decent job, a good woman, a good breakfast in the morning, let life take its course and shut the fuck up? Because that's not what life is all about. I believe there's a few keys to having a good life. Finding your passion, accepting the challenges that come with pursuing that passion, finding the creativity in this magnificent mystery of an existence and keeping everyone involved to share it together. Now maybe everyone doesn't aspire to make movies, do web videos, make mixtapes or audiobooks, but everyone desires to do more with their life than work and sleep. Maybe most aren't as vocal about it and most don't give in to the insane amount of frustration that can come with living a life of quiet desperation. Certainly, I'm a little crazy and like Tupac said in Juice, I don't give a fuck. Being a little crazy and a little outside the norm in the way I think has allowed me to take on great challenges. Everything I pursue is beyond my means, but I'm crazy enough to find a way to get it done, sometimes by destroying my finances, sometimes by destroying my body. In the end, maybe none of my movies ever get sold. Maybe none of my web videos go any more viral than they already have, and maybe nobody listens to my music. Maybe this audiobook won't even be listened to. But the journey of pursuing all these things has beaten the living fuck out of sitting around wondering what the outcome would have been without giving it a shot. Life gets fucking boring, and anyone claiming to be content with boring routine shit is fucking lying. Anyone who claims their mind doesn't take them into some bizarre places from time to time is definitely lying. And anyone keeping all these thoughts and feelings to themselves in order to adapt to the horrific norm of society is doing themselves a disservice.